the meaning of it all I can find the reason for the fall I don't know why they act like they do But I know there is something strange going on It might be the changing season But it can also be some other reason I don't know and I really don't care Though I've been searching everywhere I wish I had the answers right here in my clothes hand So I could build my safety right just where I Behind the safety skies But all I see Is so many others With the same Problems aside And now I know That this is something You don't get over Just like that You've got to work If you want to find Safety Safety in mind I wish I Right here in my clothes stand Embraced by a night so cold I've been traveling 
Good evening everyone. Tonight we're gonna have Robin and Fortson from Elegant Machinery and I'm just gonna introduce you quickly the band. During the spring 1988, John, uh, Ro uh, Richard Johnson sorry, and Leslie Bart, heavily influenced by bands and artists like Yezu, Human League, Depeche Mode, Rational Youth and Robert Marlowe, decide to start a band with the aim to make electronic music the way it was made during the 80s. Tonight we're going to ask some questions to Robert and Forsen. And the first musical sequence will be packed with tracks like uh, Strange Behavior, uh, Safety in Mind, Process, uh, Shattered Ground, and we will finish with uh, Vision Panam New Romance. All album has been recorded uh, and <coughs> published by Energy Record between 91 and 93. Hola, senor. <laughs> Hello, <Robert>. Hola. <laughs> hi. Hello. Hi, Robert. <laughs> oh, all, all of you. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah. All of you. So we are supposed to have passed already the first uh, musical uh, sequence. We had uh, strange behavior, safety in mind, process, uh, shattered ground, uh, plus another band, a French band called Vision Panam, New Romance. The first question is going to be very simple. Um, how did you came into joining uh, Elegant Machinery? Because for what I have understood, it's uh, an idea that started uh, Richard uh, Johnson and Leslie Barnes. Uh, how did you hey, yeah. met mm -hmm. them? How did you join the band? Uh, it was actually me and Richard met at a party around 86, 87. Uh, and uh, due to circumstances, we had to leave the party in a rush because there came a lot of uh, uh, former guys, rockabillies, uh, wanting to <laughs> kick our ass. <laughs> so <laughs> we, flew, we flew the field and uh, uh, we ended up sitting and talking together uh, and uh, then just by chance we met up again uh, a couple of years later uh, turned out to be that he had hooked up with one of my best friend's uh, little sister and I got invited to a party of Richards uh, in Helsingborg, Sweden and I, I went there and uh, uh, he had asked around among friends if they knew anyone who could sing in his band that he had with uh, Leslie Bain Mm -hmm. That was called pole position, and uh, I was uh, the one that she recommended. Uh, so we, we talked about it during the party, and two weeks after, I went over to Helsingborg again uh, to uh, try out. And yeah, uh, there I was in, and therefore we decided also to change the band name because it was a new setup. Okay, uh, did you sing or play music before joining uh, the band? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I am born 1971 and already when I was like uh, seven, I started to play the organ and then yeah. when I was nine, I played a little guitar. I formed my first band when I was 10. Um, I went to studio the first time, a professional studio when I was 14, I think. Uh, so I had several bands before Elgin Machinery, absolutely. And uh, so you, you, you were into this, but uh, what kind of music did you listen to when you were, when you, you were, well, sorry, sorry, when you were young and uh, what bands or artists gave you the idea to, uh, to play and sing in a band? Mm. Um, uh, Elvis Presley was uh, definitely a big uh, <laughs> uh, idol for me. Uh, thanks a lot to my dad, who is also a musician and also is totally into Elvis. So I, I kind of got indoctrinated into that music and that style. Uh, what I found out by myself was the band Kiss. Uh, I got over a tape, a mixtape, you know, one of those that you record from an LP and uh, yeah, you write just the song title. So uh, uh, my brother, uh, my big brother, he had one of those tapes he got from a friend and I didn't know how they looked like or nothing. I just <laughs> loved their music. So. Um, then when I saw how they looked like, was they like, ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> but uh, I will say that my real music interest started definitely around when I was 10. Um, all those bands came at the same time, like Depeche Mode, Juma League, Kraftwerk, uh, Soft Cell, uh, Duran Duran. All of them came with this electronic sound. 
and I was totally like, wow. <laughs> That was the moment when I left the guitar behind totally <laughs> and haven't really played since. Uh, so I, I started to save up my small pocket money to buy my first synthesizer when I was uh, 10, 11 there somewhere. What was it for a, a keyboard? What kind of synth? Uh, um, uh, that was a very simple one. It's a Casio a VL1. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's a, a synthesizer that is... Um, um, quite advanced to be in, in such a small form factor. It's been used by Depeche Mode, the Human League, uh, for instance, uh, other bad trio, do you remember? Da, da, da. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, 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 tick, tick, tick. That's from that one. <laughs> but uh, I couldn't do that much with it, honestly. So uh, in 83, I think it was, I got myself a Korg MS-20. Mm. And then things started to happen. So you discover all the tweaking and plugging with, with the Yeah, MS. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when I was that little, um, I, ha I forced my mom to translate the operation manual for, for the synthesizers and how should she explain something that she had, didn't have a clue about, like an envelope generator. Uh, she thought that was connected somehow so that you should send something since it was like a like a letter with an envelope and uh, yeah she <laughs> actually just screwed it up for me <laughs> but that also made me more persistent that i have to learn this so it was trial and error in the beginning really hmm. that's the beauty with those analog uh, since without any presets because you really have to move every little parameter to yeah get something out of it yeah what was the musical landscape in Sweden back then? Uh, was uh, electronic music a thing or, or not? Or was it a... I, I, I would say so. I would say so. Uh, I, I know uh, that already in 1978, my mom's uh, friend, uh, uh, nerdy guy, he played me some albums with uh, Kraftwerk. Uh, so already then I know that there were some people listening to it. But when, then uh, in 81, when the boom really came, uh, with those bands that I mentioned before, uh, then it really took off. It, it surely did. Um, and already back then it was uh, either you are into synth pop and synth music or you are into hard rock, heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Which is that, that was a little bit that was a little bit different for me, uh, difficult because I like Kiss still. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell that to my friends. <laughs> would you stay? Would you say that it's still the same today? Or nay, no, 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 uh, absolutely nay. Uh, or uh, nowadays we have so many genres, so uh, can't even count them. Uh, who, who should you be against then? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really don't know how that how that should work. I mean, then you have to be against a lot of uh, different genres and people. Mm, yeah. Um, what what is your creative process? Um, because I know you are working at this moment on the future album. Um, mm -hmm. You change a bit the way you were working, but what was the early uh, process of working on, on Elegant Machinery? Honestly, it's not that big different from uh, before as we do today. Um, nowadays, thanks to uh, the internet and the emails and uh, that you can share files, uh, it of course makes it a lot easier. Uh, back in um, early 90s, uh, yeah, throughout the 90s and before internet came into the picture, it was uh, really that we, we sent uh, demo tapes to each other. and. Uh, um, if Richard and Leslie wrote a song and uh, Leslie had an idea about the vocal melody, uh, they recorded uh, uh, the song without uh, a singing melody and one with a sound that sounds like ee, 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 or ee, ee, that really <laughs> is unmistakably the song, the, the, the melody for the vocals. Uh, so uh, I would say that nowadays uh, we send the songs to each other uh, with uh, Google Drive. Yeah, um, that's the only difference, really. You, you, would you say you work faster this way, or? Uh, well, it should be faster, but um, back then, uh, when uh, we started off, I mean, I was eighteen, um, Leslie was seventeen, and Richard was uh, uh, twenty. 
uh, we had all the time in the world. Yeah. And then uh, these days uh, we have family life, uh, day jobs, uh, everything has to take its time and the music comes a little bit on the side. So we have to use the spare time that we can use without uh, punishing our families too much uh, to, to use that time. So it goes faster to send the stuff to each other, but it takes a longer time to produce it. And it's also that you really over the years have become more and more critical about what can you let out? What can you release? It, it, it must be better than the, the stuff you did before. That is for sure. Yeah. So it, it's it's a long, long, long process. It is. But you have a clear image of what uh, elegant machinery s should sound like, yeah? Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say so. Yes. Uh, we we mainly me and Johan is working now. Richard is not uh, at all. Johan decided to come back um, into the band, so I decided then to reform the band as well. I had two guys from uh, Denmark from. Uh, a band called Lights of Euphoria in Elegant Machinery. But they, I let them do their stuff now. So me and Johan, and sometimes Leslie is in for this as well. Okay. But um, uh, we, we definitely have a, a view on how it should sound like. Um, and we see no reason to uh, go way too modern. We, we like what we used to do. Um, it, I mean, even in the 90s, the techno scene just bloomed and we were still making synth pop that was totally out of fashion. Hmm. Uh, but we, we still do the same. And of course, we are influenced by the today's sound landscape, the, how, how you mix a song, for instance, more uh, bass in the kick drum, uh, more snap in the snare drum, uh, such stuff. Uh, you have better tools today to make it sound good as well. So you, you, The you sound do... is definitely... <coughs> You're using uh, more v VST than you used to in the past, today? Um, no, I, I would say that it's equally much today as before. Um, I mean, before 98, 99, there were actually not really a lot of uh, VSTs to choose from, I think. Hmm. Um, I remember I bought a, a software synthesizer called Sears Systems Reality. That was must have been in 98 I bought it. Uh, And shortly after that, uh, Cubase uh, started to uh, get out with a VST standard. And mm. uh, these days, uh, hardware and software uh, is equally used. It depends on for what purpose it is. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel internet has impact the music business, uh, especially since um, 15, 20 years now that uh, we have all those uh, Spotify and all those stuff? Mm, uh, I, I like that the music is easily available. I, I mean, you can uh, uh, sit on a train and feel like, oh, I, I need some new music to listen to. And you can just uh, go into uh, iTunes store uh, or whatever you, you use and get it down. And the same thing with Spotify. You can just go for playlists from other people uh, and get new stuff that you never would have heard before. This is, in my opinion, the new kind of radio that we use mm -hmm. and i mean that's the same thing what you do you you stream this online as well and this is also definitely a part of that in my opinion uh what i think about it otherwise is uh, yeah of course it's a lot less sales these days uh, than it used to be uh, that is of course sad because uh, it's a lot of lot of time and um, um heart that is put into this and uh, Um, especially if people are download it, uh, downloading it illegally, then it's even worse. But Spotify, I mean, provides you with hardly any money. So uh, I must say that um, uh, th those, those uh, band pages that exist are a lot better because the money goes straight to the artists. Yeah. So you use now Bandcamp like most of the bands. Uh, yeah, but we released uh, the uh, EP1 in 2016 there. Uh, I haven't put up anything more yet, but I am planning um, to hopefully be uh, able to put up uh, at least a couple of the old albums with Elegant Machinery as well. Yeah, because all those are not uh, easy to find in digital format lately. Mm. 
My, the first the first album is out. Um, our previous record label or our first record label, Energy Records, are not really active these days. Mm-hmm. And uh, the owner, who is uh, the only guy left out of three who used to own it, he is doing a lot of other stuff. Uh, um, he's uh, kind of into selling uh, merchandise for other bands and so on. Uh, he sells... Uh, um, he used to sell CDs and stuff as well. So he he's a, a, an old mail order guy. And mm-hmm. Elegant machinery is not his priority, I can tell. So uh, uh, since I know that Poupé Fabrique, uh, who also was back then at Energy Records, they have released their stuff on their own. Uh, there shouldn't be any arguments from Energy Records if I do it either. Yeah. So we can uh, already uh, wait for most of your album to be released on Bandcamp in the forthcoming future? Uh, yeah, uh, sometime uh, late next year. Um, I would say that it's most realistic to say that we can be done. And uh, we'll see then uh, if we go with a record label uh, or if we go for doing it on our own. Uh, it all depends on uh, if we get a, a good offer from any label that can actually... Uh, make sense out of why we should sign with them. Mm-hmm. So you, you, in, in the past you were also signed by the um, um, side label of Offbeat called the Visage at the time. How, how did that happen? Mm, they, they are not um, a label that we signed with. Uh, they signed with our record label. So they were kind of a distributor uh, or sister label or company label so we never we never signed with Visage um, but they signed with the uh, energy records okay so it was a license yeah exactly that's how it's called thank you <laughs> okay so i'm gonna announce the next uh, music uh, part that we're gonna play uh, we're gonna mm-hmm. have a flag of truth from shattered ground uh, cheap girl mm-hmm. uh, still for the same mm-hmm. album hard to handle mm-hmm. Uh, repressive, same yeah, same album. Repressive thoughts, mm-hmm. also same album. Yep. And under yep. contention, also from the same album.
and you will see it burning Understand, the time is running out For every second the step we take Are we still making the same mistakes, do you know? It's getting hard to have
South America seems to be a big market for you to It is music, definitely. Huh? Yeah, actually, what we talked about before this with uh, uh, being into synth or hard rock, if mm -hmm. we go for those terms, that, that is kind of the thing there. They are really into metal or this, or they are mainstream, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that? Because it seems to be quite new in the last uh, five to ten days, uh, ten years, uh, sorry. Mm hmm. Uh, I, I could say that uh, uh, yeah, internet is a lot to thank for that. And uh, in all honesty, uh, in in those countries, it's uh, kind of weird that they come with uh, pirate copied CDs, CDRs, <laughs> and you, they want you to sign it because that is totally normal for them to have. Uh, so I, I think that is uh, definitely a part of it. Um, Napster played a big part in the 90s for this. So, so you are you looking for a label in South America? Do you have a, a better distribution there? 
No, not really, because it's too far away and it needs to be a, a label that you actually can meet up in person yeah. once in a while at least. Uh, we were actually offered in the 90s to uh, sign with one of the major labels in Mexico. Uh, that is a globally major label. Uh, and they only had one demand on us, that we should, we should move there. We should live there for at least three years. <laughs> we should sign for three albums, but we had to sing in Spanish and be able to do interviews in Spanish. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was a temp it was a tempting idea, but uh, unfortunately, Richard he got his first child around that time. So it's it, it just didn't work, um, it fell apart totally. But uh, no, a, a label in in Europe is definitely uh, preferred. So, so you you know already uh, on which label you're gonna be for the next album, or is it not? Mm. No, absolutely not, because uh, I, I've just started to uh, uh, brief through this with our manager and uh, with Johan and uh, Leslie when he's uh, available. Uh, we, we are open for a few labels that we think of, so I don't mention any names, but it's all about how much they can offer uh, towards what we can offer them. Mm -hmm. So um, there should be a certain value for them uh, to, to work with us because if, if there's a certain value, they will also do their very best to market it. Yeah. You, did you try to contact uh, uh, big labels, bigger labels than uh, normal independent labels that uh, you were on? Uh, um, um, do you have any certain label in mind? Or? Yeah, like uh, Mute or... <laughs> Those kind of uh, uh, mute, mute, mute. Uh, actually, mute we never tried with, but um, it, maybe it should be a cool thing to do. Yeah. Even though I don't, yeah, I, I don't really think that they would market you as a band anymore, would they? No, but they still, they still produce uh, Erasure, for instance. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. I know. But I mean, they have the bands that they make their money on. But uh, do you know any new bands from Mute? Yeah, yeah. I don't actually. Uh, <laughs> no, they, they you have, do. Uh, uh maybe more on their uh, techno side uh, exactly yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah but even uh, e even with some bands like swans yeah they have mm -hmm. been sign signing a special contract which means uh, mm -hmm. swans using their own label young gods in america and for the mm -hmm. european market it's mute that is uh, um pressing and distributing mm -hmm. and selling them so Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this type of contract could be, mm -hmm. yeah. could be yeah. in, in your uh, mind. Inter interesting. Uh, <laughs> okay, if I put it like this, it wouldn't hurt to send mute a demo, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or even the finished album, so they hear directly if it's something to have or not. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, uh, with all this comeback, there are lots of. Uh, mm -hmm small new labels uh, mm. that's now releasing and producing a new wave, mm. cold wave, uh, all this mm -hmm. 80s sounds mm. that are back. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. will say that most of them are quite small labels. So, um, yes. and, and in America, they are re-releasing old 80s stuff like... Uh, um, on Mannequin Records, but Man Mannequin is, Mannequin from, uh, is uh, Germany, uh, 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 Berlin. Berlin, Berlin, yeah. Berlin. <laughs> and uh, mm. the American one from, from Martin Dupont, um, uh, Minimal, Minimal Wave. Wave really. Minimal Wave yeah. is releasing also. I, I know, I know that um, um, Cleopatra Records have released some stuff. Mm. Uh, of course. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> with the 80s, 80s uh, direction of it. Mm -hmm. um, they actually had something with Elegant Machinery as well, uh, even though we were mainly 90s back then. But it, it's considered to be 80s in, since it's 80s style. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they did re release lots of uh, uh, old, st old stuff. Um, mm -hmm. They have now signed uh, again also. Uh, goth band and all the stuff, but it's um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. quite bright label. They're signing lots of completely different uh, type of music. Um, for example, yeah. someone from your country, I think, uh, Laser Strip. Uh, uh, they are from Denmark. Denmark. Oh. 
Sorry. Danish, yes, <laughs> Sorry. Klaus Larsen. <laughs> uh, exactly. I can tell that uh, uh, that Leather Strip have made a remix uh, for Elegant Machinery that is yeah. unreleased and will be released with the album Ooh. as a bonus track. Great. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's really, really good. <laughs> yeah, he, he, He's a genius, Klaus. Yeah, he seems to be very mm. talented for... Uh, oh, yeah. doing... uh, very humble, very talented, a, a great man. Yeah. Good, good uh, on live show. I saw him um, in Cannes. Mm -hmm. It was on um, industrial mm -hmm. festival in Cannes. There is a festival yeah. once a year in the south of France. Yep. Um, and um, he sadly lost his uh, friend a few years ago. I think it's two years. So I don't know if he's still. Uh, uh, it was his husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His husband. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Klaus Larsen or Leather Strip. Uh, he actually had a gig in Sweden uh, last weekend. Oh, great! Uh, so at he's the back in place. As, yeah, it was together with uh, Front Two for Two and some other bands. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Pretty cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have an idea um, around when your next album should come out? Because it's going to be the fifth album, huh? Uh, it depends on how you count it. We have uh, The Greater Faces, the first one, Shattergrounds, the second, third, Yesterday, Man. And then uh, we released an album that is called Decorative Thoughts, which is re-recordings of... Hello, hello. Hello, hello. hello. Are hello. you still there? Yep. No. Yeah. Yeah. We, can, you, we, can you hear me? We had a glitch, yeah. yeah. We had a, a okay, small no glitch. Problem. We lost you some, some second. Okay, what was the last thing you heard? Uh, so you were speaking about uh, what I um, uh, discovered lately. You sent me this one. It seems to be a half compilation, half uh, album with uh, yes. unreleased track. You were speaking of this e this one. E yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that would go with the fourth album, in my opinion. And then we made... Um, Uh, a soft exchange in 2008, so that would be the fifth. So I would say the sixth album mm -hmm. um, will be out, and that would be in the late next year, hopefully. Okay, great. Maybe it's time for a musical sequence now, so what we'll be so listening to? The third uh, music se sequence will be with the Blind Man Dream uh, from Yesterday Man. Uh, like Leaves, still from the same album. Uh, Myself with You, again from that album. Then we have My Secret Garden, which is um, a cover version oh, yeah. of uh, Depeche <laughs> Mode. And that's yeah, a very old one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of your f early. Uh, yeah, th that ones. was uh, released before we even released our first album. It was. Uh, Uh, out on the compilation called um, I Sometimes Wish I Was Famous. Spock, Posh, Puppet Fabric, Cadrip, Stog, and all those bands were there as well on this. Uh, yeah, but that was before our first album. So it's really old. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have A Matter of Sense, still from Yesterday Man. Uh -huh. And we're yes. going to finish this musical part with the um, a German a new wave band called Camouflage with the Great mm. Commandment. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Very Great old. Song. Well, I think it's uh, 88. Something like is that. Is it even 85? Mm, could be. Oh, is it 88? <coughs> I, I think <laughs> on, on my maxi, it was 88. But uh, okay, can, okay. Uh, can be I'm, I'm just thinking mid 80s. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you, you might be right there. Hey 
There have been times when I have doubted reality Whatever happened to our purity Pictures of this world inside my head All those broken tears that have been shed Fear spreading like a plague within us all Everybody's waiting for the man to fall But could this be another strange disease? Conceived illusions Just one.
And it's too late to change events Life is a matter of sense Redemption comes to him question about the, the the yesterday man album because i was very surprised uh -huh. as i told you uh, when i had you in, uh, at, at, on the phone about the track yesterday mm -hmm. man that was not on that album wearing the name mm -hmm. of it for for what reason is that excellent uh, track not on the album mm. uh, uh I think I, I, my my memory might fail on me now, but I think that Yesterday Man was a song instrumental on uh, the single "Myself with You." Yes, yeah, it is. So it was yeah. like the beat. So it was like the second or third track on that one, and uh, it became instrumental because we didn't really have time. Uh, we had a deadline for the album, uh, so we didn't have time to record the vocals. Uh, which we did later on for uh, a soft uh, no for uh, a decade of thoughts the compilation album. Yeah. Then we released it with vocals. So you, you, uh, did, you didn't yes, want to release the, the instru instrumental one on the album. You wanted to to uh, wait. We, we we always had this uh, point of view that uh, a single. Many bands release a single and then the the song that is next to it, the, so to say, B side. It's usually quite uninteresting and just a leftover song often. Mm -hmm. uh, we always thought that it's important to also include some good stuff there. Yeah. And uh, we couldn't really see that Yesterday Man was fitting into the album between what songs it should come into. Uh, so we decided that that goes to the single. Okay. So, so well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a logic that uh, we can understand. Um, I was mm -hmm. always wondering why when I discover yeah. a bit later yeah. that track, which blew my mind, yeah, I must yeah, say. Yeah. It's probably one of, yeah, the, yeah. of the tracks I played the most in club at the time. Uh, so oh, so, huh? so I, I was very... Uh, in both versions, I must say, I, I like very much. It's quite different. Mm. There is a, Even the tempo, it's a bit uh, slower on the mm -hmm. instrumental part. Uh, no, 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 on the vocal mm -hmm. part, it's a bit slower. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah it might be, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's almost like two different track. Yeah, we can see that, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, actually, actually the, the, that album, uh, uh, A Decade of Thoughts, where we had this uh, Yesterday Man with vocals as well, uh, was recorded in Covenant Studio, and uh, uh, that mm. album was produced by Eskil of Covenant. Eskil Simonson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, mm. And he's an old schoolmate of Richard. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Old in the game. <laughs> um, we we're gonna speak a bit about about uh, keyboards and stuff because we have lots of fans uh, wanting to know mm. what kind of machine you use, and what are your favorite. Oh, one? favorite topic. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right now or in the past? Um. On both sides, Let, let's start with, with, with early material. Um. 
Early material. Um, first album, my favorite synth there was uh, the Prophet VS um, by Sequential. Um, mm. that, that is a, a wavetable synthesizer. I think it was actually the first wavetable synthesizer out there, a vector synthesizer with this joystick on top that you could blend it between four waveforms, mm. uh, sampled waveforms. Um, that is definitely a, a, a favorite of mine. Um, I can't really recall what else we had there. Um, yeah, we used Korg Monopoly. That is also um, a really, really good one. Um, a bit limited, but it sounds really fat and juicy. Um, if we go to album number two, then uh, we started to earn some money on the music, so uh, could afford a little bit more. Um, what to talk about there is uh, uh, Oberheim OB8, Oberheim mm. Expander. Um, what else did we have? We had the uh, Waldorf um, Microwave. Mm -hmm. uh, and we used a um, Akai S950 sampler. That was used on the first album as well. Uh, we started to use a lot of uh, um, Emacs. Um, Great sampler with analog filter in the first incarnation. Mm -hmm. uh, those are definitely favorites there. Uh, we Expander joined us on the third album uh, together with uh, um, uh, we took in an ARP 2600. Uh, brilliant synth. Uh, if anyone wants to hear how it sounds like, uh, just put on Depeche Mode's first album, Speak and Spell. It's like 99% included the kick drum coming mm -hmm. from that synth. Mm -hmm. It sounds brilliant. It's, it's amazing. A synthesizer that actually celebrates 50 years today, or this yeah. year. And, and Robert, I've got a little... Um, oh, sorry, I've got a little question, and I would like to know what mm -hmm. is your weapon of choice when it comes to uh, drums and uh, drum sequencer? Did you have a favorite one, or did you switch from uh, one to another between albums? Uh, uh, we actually haven't used any sequencer, uh, hardware sequencer, in any form since uh, uh, the second album. Uh, then we had a Roland MC50. Uh, then we went over to uh, Atari. So that part uh, we can exclude directly. We programmed all the drums in, in uh, Cubase oh. from the beginning. Um, not using that anymore, but... Uh, but the favorite choice has definitely been the uh, ARP 2600 because there is... Uh, uh, a really, really deep bottom end when you go for the you, you can really make a, a deep, heavy kick drum uh, with a, a good zap in the beginning. Yeah. So you, you, that, that is definitely... A, you're more into making your own sound uh, for the drum part than using a drum machine. No, I would say it's both. Uh, it depends on. Uh, we, we have, uh, for instance, we, we used uh, uh, the snare drum from a drum machine called Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have used uh, uh, the Korg KPR 55. Uh, no, uh, KPR 77, it's called. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's very similar to the speak and spell drum machine there as well, the snare sound. Um, what else? Uh, of course, the 909 uh, is quite hard to beat when it comes to uh, making a song for the dance floor. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, preferably um, analog drum machines that sounds really uh, thin and uh, floppy. And uh, then uh, sample drums, yeah. especially from the Emacs. Yeah. So uh, let's go back to the band. You 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 split sometimes. You reformed. Uh, it's all history. But mm -hmm. during uh, mm -hmm. when the, the the band was on hiatus, you had a lot of side projects. Did you? Uh, can you tell us about uh, about them? Mm. Which time do you refer to? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I just know you you mm -hmm. you you had you worked on a number a number of uh, side projects like uh, M4, yeah, yeah, Hype. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, if you start first, at '97, I was recording a ba um, an album, a cover album of uh, uh, Depeche Mode's Ultra, yeah. under the name of Diesel Christ. Uh, did this together with John Fryer. 
who actually worked with Depeche Mode in the beginning as an engineer. Um, we did this in Germany, uh, France a bit, and uh, uh, Belgium and USA, New York. Yeah. Um, th that was uh, um, the record label got in touch with me and asked me if I was interested to uh, do uh, uh, work with them and. Uh, I didn't get to know what it was about until I actually came into the studio. Hmm. Um, but uh, I, I love the thrill of it and uh, what uh, have been programmed already by a guy from the band Invisible Limits, uh, Andreas Küchenmeister. He programmed quite a lot already and it sounded brilliant. So I said, okay, I'm in. Uh, what we go further on to the year 2000, we have Enforce, um, same thing there record label get in touch with me and asking me if I'm interested to work with a producer um, who was said to have a lot of songs written already that I could choose from and I should just write the vocal melody and uh, the lyrics. Uh, I said yes. Uh, I came down to Germany and met this guy and uh, he asked me to play my songs. I said no, you were supposed to have the songs. No, the record label said that you should have the songs. So it turned out to be that we've been tricked, both of us. Uh, so we we <laughs> we started directly to record uh, our own songs that we wrote on the spot. Yeah. Uh, hype came out of that elegant machinery. Was really really laying low. We just did a few gigs uh, in USA, Mexico, Russia came later. I think. Yes, it did. Um, so uh, I, I was interested in trying to do something electronic, but a little bit harder yeah. um, to let yourself go a little bit there, to not work within the limitations that you actually have made up for yourself with Elegant Machinery. And um, at about the same time as that album was made, um, uh, we got in touch again with each other in the band of Elegant Machinery and started to directly after that work on a soft exchange. Then I've done uh, a lot of uh, stuff together with separate musicians uh, um, all over the world, like, oh, right. like a guest vocalist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to introduce to the next music part that we're going to play. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to have Fading Away, Save Me, mm -hmm. sa yeah. Say Goodbye, Feel the Violence. Mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday yeah. man the instrumental version and we're gonna end mm -hmm. with commuter analog death uh, it's a french mm -hmm. um, new wave electronic project um, sounds cool so most of those are coming from yesterday man again <laughs>
I want you to confess The way you feel when you see them fall Wallowing in pain Like flowers in the heavy rain I hear hypnotizing words Propaganda spreading nationwide Implanted and concealed Once more Culprits teach the playing girls Nothing is sincere Trust replaced by fear I see the madness of our times Within the sample of the young boy's blood Unity splits in two
What is your favorite uh, um, format? Do you prefer CD or do you prefer vinyl? Or? Uh, no, I, I would say that um, um, if I could choose, I would choose something uh, flak, something that is yeah. uncompressed. Um, uh, I think that, um, um, and then should be 24 bits, uh, 96 kilohertz. Mm. Uh, CD is 4.1 kilohertz and 16 bits. Um, sounds pretty good. I mean, if, if you listen to the first CDs that came out in the early 80s, and uh, if you listen to the fade out of songs, it sounds horrible. That is uh, something that is of the past. We have a lot of converters these days that are working a lot, lot, lot better. Um, but I think the CD is a uh, CD album, especially is a nice format because I love to get a whole story, so to say, a mm -hmm. whole adventure, 40, 50 minutes in front of you of just discovering something yeah, of a band yeah 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 and, and also i love that concept C cd is now uh, the price are going quite down so now it's uh, for those who mm. doesn't have that much money it's 
probably the most yeah. interesting physical format. What do you think of most it? Most likely, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I would say so. Yeah. Uh, vinyl is quite costly to, to produce, so you surely need to have a, um, a, some certainty that you actually will sell them, uh, yeah. that you know that you have the fan base that would like it. Um, so it, it's a risky business, I would say, to release vinyl. Um, it is. CD is probably the most uh, secure way if you want to have a physical format. Yeah. Otherwise, you just go online. Let's talk about uh, a bit about the stage. You, you, you're still touring, uh, except from the um, COVID-19 uh, hiatus, right? You, you... Actually, actually uh, we, we uh, decided to lay low yeah. shortly before the COVID uh, um, pandemic came into our lives, unfortunately. Uh, but it was a, a decision made already then because uh, we got a little... Uh, one uh, a contribution to the family, so to say, a little song, yeah. <laughs> uh, two two years ago, and um, uh, since the pregnancy all, already was uh, on the way there, so uh, it was a natural decision to lay low for a while and work on the album instead. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, when it's out, it will definitely be uh, at least festival gigs and so on. Okay, but you 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 love the stage, no? You, I I think you're a, uh, I, I, a, a, an entertainer. Yeah. You you talked uh, to, to, to you you talked about Elvis Presley as a, an influence, but we yeah. we we yeah. feel that you you like it. You like to to sing, to move on the stage. Uh, isn't it important yeah, for I you? Mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would I would say that it, it, it's the best way to actually uh, meet up with those people that listen to your music, yeah. uh, you can get a direct response to what is what they love about it. Uh, unfortunately, not so many who can show the interest in the synthesizers as I would <laughs> hope they would. But, uh, but it's, it's definitely a special feeling to be on stage and communicate with the audience. It is. Uh, and then I, I basically have been grown up on stage. I mean, I had my first show when I was 11. Yeah. <laughs> and you had musical <laughs> training. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I did uh, initially. I, I, when I was 14, I was playing classical piano and uh, singing opera for a yeah, lady. Yeah, sure. Uh, but um, nothing really since then. <laughs> so okay. I, I'm uh, what is called uh, autodidact. Mm. Yeah. Quite well done. But you, uh, how, how long do you practice every day for your voice? Uh, these days, um, about uh, no time at all. <laughs> um, I warm up uh, before I record my vocals, um, drink uh, some uh, um, honey sweetened tea, uh, not too hot, uh, preferably a little bit warmer than room temperature. And then there's a, a little pill you can take that's called Revoice. Um, that is for uh, yeah, soothing your uh, vocal cords as well if they are raspy. Uh, yeah, so uh, not not much each day, I would say. Uh, not really the possibility to do that. Uh, I I mostly hum for myself. <laughs> but you're not a, not a drinker, not a smoker, huh? Uh, I smoke um, two to four cigarettes per day. Um, mm. At special occasions, a few more. Uh, I don't drink since uh, uh, almost four years now, three and a half years. Oh. Um, nah, it was too much. <laughs> um, it's kind of, kind of ironic, actually, because I moved from Sweden, where alcohol is uh, <laughs> ridiculously expensive, yeah. uh, to uh, Germany, where it's <laughs> really cheap and easy, easily available. But uh, no, it was a choice that uh, had to be made. It was either uh, a downward spiral or to stand up and go straight with this. And, and I'm, I'm really happy. I mean, I'm, I'm always clear in my head. Um, unless I'm tired, of course. <laughs> and I, I can see all the other people uh, going out and making fools of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> we have the same here in France, <laughs> in Paris. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I, I would say that everything below Sweden has it. <laughs> <laughs> Nor Norway, uh, Sweden and Finland have uh, uh, state-owned alcohol stores. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, and um, uh, yeah, the prices are uh, extremely lot higher in those countries yeah. than in, in down here at our level. So, so now that you live in Germany, what um, 
What mm. do you like in Germany? What amazes you uh, by living in Germany? Um, the food uh, is really, really nice. Uh, I like the medical system. Um, it's for free to go to the dentist here, not in Sweden. Like you pay uh, a fifth of your salary sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you need to go for a root canal, for instance. Uh, uh, I, the medical system is really great here, I must say. Uh, I also think that the political system um, or the political way they have done stuff here, the, the recent decades, have been really, really nice as well. Uh, you, not that many problems uh, as I experienced in Sweden, honestly. Okay, let's go back to music. What, what bands or sounds do you listen to uh, uh, today? What what, uh, what are your last discoveries uh, in music? Last discoveries? Um, <laughs> I, I, not, not that many bands, in all honesty. <laughs> But let's see, uh, what, what do I have on my desk here now? Uh, yeah. I have... <laughs> Uh, one one um, um, CG with a band, a small band from Sweden that uh, released their first album. Um, they are called Cold Connection. Uh, I have a, a fairly local uh, one here with a band called N Frequency. Um, those two albums I like a lot, uh, I must say. Um, otherwise, I'm, I'm mainly listening to uh, a lot of the old stuff. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm that boring. <laughs> uh, so what I listen to then, it's uh, uh, it's the same as before. It's uh, Data, Human League, Soft Cell, uh, Depeche Mode, of course, obviously. Uh, some Erasure, I love Jazzu, uh, Fad Gadget. Mm. Yeah. John Fox, maybe, too? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, especially Metamatic, the album. Yeah. That, is, that is brilliant. Gary Newman? Gary Newman, not too much, but um, I... I, I I, I can say that I actually enjoy what he's doing more nowadays than yeah. what he did in the past. Mm. Uh, it, I like this uh, rougher, harder sound, more uh, mm -hmm. gothic. Mm -hmm. uh, so you speaking of the album he did with his uh, daughter, is it? Um, that I didn't hear about, honestly. But I know that, um, could it be early 2000s? Yeah, he what he did in... Yeah, so it was a lot more distorted guitars, uh, but a lot more energy in the song. Of course, I mean, I, I love the like Down in the Park and uh, those mm. songs uh, that it did in the 70s, 80s. Yeah. Uh, I do, but not, not that many songs, honestly. No. But you, you only listen to electronic music, no, no metal or uh, <laughs> other things? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, honestly, I, I went to a Kiss concert a couple of years ago with my wife here in Germany, and uh, I listen once in a while to uh, bands like Nirvana, um, yeah. what else? Um, it, it's mainly electronic music, but I, I like a lot of... Um, um, I, I tend to say that I listen to everything from the 30s and on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. An old, an old school guy. Yeah, but I, I, I like a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that is done uh, these days as well, even though I don't listen that much to it. But I mean, for instance, uh, Swedish Robin, yeah, great stuff. Sure. Uh, Lady, Lady Gaga have done a lot of brilliant stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, And uh, speaking of uh, your fellow uh, singer, uh, do you know about uh, Karin Park? Is a is a singer that uh, that uh, I discovered uh, lately. And he's uh, yeah, very yeah, talented yeah. too. She she made a disc with oh, um, yes. Lost Mord, but she also uh, yeah, sings yeah. with Arab Roth, her husband, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. she does things on her own. Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 brilliant vocalist, mm -hmm. brilliant vocalist, really uh, super duper personal <laughs> voice, uh, totally unique in my opinion. <laughs> And, uh, uh, the closest you can get to, I would say, uh, uh, there is probably something like Kate Bush, but they don't sound alike either. Mm -hmm. But it, the originality of it is that big. Okay, thank you very much for um, giving us that pleasure. massive uh, yeah, interview. That was great. Anything mm -hmm. to say to our listeners? Last thing to 
Yeah, uh, I would say that uh, it's a pleasure to uh, actually be in this position, uh, sitting and talking <laughs> for you nice guys there, uh, and sharing my opinions about uh, this and that. Uh, extremely funny if you guys out there are interested in synthesizers and uh, like to talk <laughs> about that. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not. I can never stop about that. <laughs> You're not, okay. No, I, I'm well, much uh, of a, uh, a pure singer, but not, uh, yeah. not okay, an instrument. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, but I'm... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but actually, vocal techniques is fun to talk about. <laughs> it is. But um, uh, I, I would say also to those people who haven't heard us before, uh, please dig in. There's a lot of stuff out there, more than this that you heard in this show. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have enough time to play all the thing we wanted, anyway. Uh, uh, that would take some hours. <laughs> <laughs> but but we're going to have, <laughs> after the show, we're going to have a special, what we call react. React, uh -huh. where we will yeah. have like almost two hours of music with no speaking at all. So oh. they will discover some more of your tracks in there. Mm -hmm. and, ho and hopefully other great artists. Yes, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, 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 me too. <laughs> I don't want to be alone there. <laughs> no, no, that's, you, you won't be alone. You will be in, in great company. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> then, then, then I feel welcome. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much again, uh, Robert. My pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure is shared. Thank you, Robert. And I hope to thank see you, you thank soon. Thank you. Take care, guys. Yep. You okay. too. I hope okay, to bye. see you soon on me stage. Too, huh? Me too. Me <laughs> too. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope I can go over to France soon with the band. So for the last musical part, um, about 16 minutes and a half, we will have Feel the Silence from Soft Exchange, With Grace uh, from Soft Exchange again, Shut Up and Take My Money from the very last maxi done in 2016, and again a track from the same maxi called I Say. And we will finish with a Beautiful World from the maxi Feel the Silence that came out in 2008. And that will be it for tonight. We will have just after that a small React part. As you know, React is music with no blah, blah, blah. So almost two hours. Uh, enjoy that one. Have a nice evening.